officer. No, no. Welcome back to another episode of Change. <laughs> so this week we have it's a conversation I always want to have because I love design. I love it so much. I think it it, it, it changes everything. I'm a huge proponent of the stuff I like. I don't like the stuff I don't like, and usually most of the time I don't know how to explain that. Well, did it this week's guest, Dave Officer, knows the answers, is used to talking to dum-dums like me and explaining what good design looks like and where it comes from. Um, we talk about where he came from. We talk about how he got into design, which is a really interesting conversation because, you know, unlike a lot of people out there, he didn't do five, six years of school to go and then learn what he's doing. He's been doing this kind of on and off for <laughs> an amount of years. Um, but really good sensibility just about how to how to come up with ideas, how to be creative, how to come up with, you know, get to the point where you can actually help your designer do the creative. Um, so a really interesting conversation. If you're not already, go and check out Dave on LinkedIn. Um, he's just really constantly released, really interesting design. And he does what I would love to do. He sees something cool and he's able to go and make it look awesome and stick himself in it. So check him out. But in the meantime, strap in, hold yourselves down, have a coffee, grab on with both hands because here is Mr. Dave Officer on The Jaily Show. And we are live. We are so very live. Welcome back to another episode of The Jaily Show. Thanks for all the messages we're getting through and we're going to get back to you. And also thanks for like talking about topics that we can come up with different guests. It's really interesting to know what you guys want to hear us talk about and we try and add them in as much as this like loose sieve can remember things so this week um in the past we've talked to a lot of people about marketing we've talked to people about leadership um but something that we is always discussed in kind of all the conversations we have is branding and design and then the importance of it but it's not necessarily something that we have true experts to come on and talk now i may or i may not have picked him up enough but that expert today the true art aficionado the designer with the graphical intent is the mr dave officer <laughs> crowd noises, crowd noises. <laughs> Insert crowd noises Hello. here. <laughs> Insert crowd noise here because there's no applause. <laughs> Hello. How you doing, Dave? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry you couldn't get an expert in. So, but I'm I'm happy to sit here in their absence. It was very kind of you to fill in when the real artiste uh, was uh, snapped a pencil and had a little breakdown and couldn't write. Yeah, yeah. It shows I'm sorry, man. how much I know. So for those people yeah. out there who haven't who haven't already uh, followed your content and know who you are, Dave, uh, tell the kids, tell the people about you. Tell the kids. Okay, so um, my name is Dave, um, and I am a graphic designer and an illustrator who does thing makes things pretty for people takes their messaging, makes it look sweet. And um, yeah, that, that was prepared, wasn't it? I obviously Very prepared that. Yeah. Like um, yeah. So, and, and that's, and then I create um, daft stuff for myself, whether it's um, <laughs> stuff to promote myself or just content in general and, and silly, silly things generally. And graphic uh, that's design, right? Because I, I, I remember myself. <laughs> I remember uh, back in school, um, graphic design was my favorite class, but was it for a good, yeah, for a good reason. So we had this teacher who was from, I want to say uh, Australia, right? Yeah. And years later, after he had been our teacher for four straight years, being our great, you know, was the graphic design guy, learned everything of him. Four years, you know, after school had finished, I was working in a bar. He started drinking that bar. We became friends. I found out that teacher did not know anything about graphic design. The only teaching qualification they had was field and stream. So they taught people how to like do outdoorsy stuff in Australia. Yeah. That was enough <laughs> to oh, get a teaching job brilliant. in our school. And basically he, he literally said that he would sit and be like, how to draw a 3D box. Son of a gun, it works. Brilliant. And then the cast would walk in and he'd be like, cool. So today, kids, we're going to be drawing a 3D box. I've been doing this for years. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so every time I'm what like, I remember, I remember some graphic design. I realized that I really didn't learn what I needed to do. But uh, was oh, it something fantastic. that was like drawing and art, something that you loved in school and then went on and did uni and, and, and got into graphical design? Like, you know, where, where, where did it come from? No, no, it was it was. um. I've loved drawing since, ever since I was a kid. So I started to get into it when I was probably about six or seven. Um, started collecting comic books. Mm -hmm. Started to copy what I saw. Um, 
realized I was okay at it. It was weird. It was like a it, it, one day it just clicked. Like I, I'd att- always attempted to draw in school and I was shocking. And then one day, um, I remember, and I've still got the drawing. I haven't got it here. I've got it cool. back at my parents' house in Northern Ireland. Um, I keep meaning to bring it over. But I remember very specifically, now bearing in mind, I'm maybe like six or seven here. So do you remember, um, uh, oh, shit, I forgot what they're called. Do you remember they did um, a, a, like a kid's version of Looney Tunes? But was it Tiny Tunes or? Tiny Tunes? Oh, Tiny Tunes, maybe something like that. But it was like kid versions of the Looney Tunes characters. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was getting those comics and I did the Porky Pig equivalent. Uh-huh. Um, I can't remember what his name was now. This is bad. But anyway, I drew him. And I drew a pig and I colored it in. And I remember sitting back and going, that's actually all right. <laughs> and then my mom came in and she went, when did you learn to draw? I was like, apparently about five minutes ago. <laughs> and, and so there was one like specific moment, everything just kind of clicked. And I went, God, I, I think I can do this. And I became obsessed with it. So I just drew and drew and drew and drew. Um, and then when I did go on to higher education and mm. um, it, it made me fall out of love with it entirely because it was really? like, uh, yeah, I hate it. I'm not very good at getting taught things because like, <laughs> um, I play the drums as well and I've never had a lesson in it in my life because the <laughs> thought of it just bores the pants off me. I just want to hit stuff. And I'm the same with drawing. Like I don't want to learn the techniques. And I, I, same thing with graphic design. I learned the rules for graphic design uh-huh. so I could break them. Like I right. hate, I just, I hate being taught this is how you do things and do, now I go and do that. Yeah, yeah. So desperately dull. So I, um, so yeah, but school, so school put it off me because it was very, the lessons were very prescriptive and they felt very strict and very, like, sure. and this, is what, this is what you must do. And if I kind of tried to deviate off that even ever so slightly, it and would you've be. Got the same, you got the same collection of greys in your beard that I do. So I guess we're the same sort of age, but we're at a weird cusp there where like, yeah. you know, the, the digital side or of graphic design, like graphic design used to be those, that paper with squares on it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're yeah. actually drawing things out and making copies of them, but we were in that weird kind of switchover period where it was still for that, but it was like, by the way, you can use like computers to make yeah. this also, right? Yeah, computers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my first, my first um, experience with Photoshop would have been 97, I think. Um, and, and I remember just thinking, oh my God, I, I absolutely love this. And, and it was the most basic thing in the world, but I, I, I adored it then, but I, I did work experience in a right. graphic design studio. This is back in Belfast, but they, um, and I think a lot of people have experienced this. You, when you go into an office and they, they almost forget that they've got someone coming for work experience and they go, Oh, <laughs> shit, oh the kids here. Oh, what can we get them to do? Did you, I thought you were going to plan something for him. I didn't plan anything for him. Oh, Christ. I thought you were um, planning something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, oh, well, I've been busy working, so just throw the kid in the corner. So the, the very first day, I was given a pile of um, name tags and lanyards for an upcoming event. So I put name tags in the lanyards. Um, nice. And my week was pretty much just doing stuff like that. And then towards the end of the week, they could see that I was ready to throw myself out the window. So I think I did my work experience in October. Um, yeah. And... So Christmas is sort of coming up and they said, do you want to maybe draw a Christmas card design for us? Okay. So I drew some Christmas cards and they went, nice. Um, I think that's your time. You can go. Now. It. This is yeah, it. One yeah. last round of tea and then on you go. Yeah. So it was crap. So um, school had made me think everything was pants and, <laughs> um, uh, and the work experience. I thought this is awful. I don't want to do this as a career because I'll fall out of love with it. Yeah. So I proceeded to go through my the whole of my twenties doing a string of jobs that I absolutely detested, and um, uh, only really started to get back into this kind of stuff on the side, just as a hobby. Yeah, thinking yeah. I'll never do it as a job because I will hate it, and I don't want that to destroy my love for it. <laughs> so that was it. And then when I got into my thirties, I got a job um, with a like a drum company. So because cool. I play drums, that's my other sort of big. Love. Hey man, I've been I've been in I've been in a punk band for twenty years. Like, you know, have you? Oh, you're hell. still in it? Yeah, 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 yeah. With Tony, he's right there. Really? Chris Army. There you go. You know. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I was more of a metal guy, so we were playing all the. Dude, we duh, duh, I'm, I'm I'm Pantera, uh, like my favorite band. That is my, the, the album that changed my life was Cowboys from Hell. 
That's my favorite like, album. Oh, oh, dude, exactly the same. We're on a slight tangent, but oh, my God, yeah, I love that album. So, um, yeah, so that was a big thing for me growing up. So I, I got into a music company. I thought, Christ, this is it. This is now this I get to take I, the thing I love and do the thing I enjoy. What I'm meant, this is awesome. what I'm meant to do. Um, so that was really cool. And then I, I started doing more design on the side. So I started, it became like a side hustle. Yeah. So this is kind of like 2009, 2010. Um, started doing it more on the side. And, and the more, more I did, the more work that came in, but the more um, time it took. So it was taking me away from the full-time thing. So I, I kind of, it kept going on these peaks and troughs. You know, it was getting busy and I thought, oh, maybe I could do this. And then I thought, I am quite enjoying the drum thing though. So I don't want to muck it up because if I work for myself, I will muck it up. So I'll just keep this going. So I went through <laughs> years of just doing, you know, that and, and putting the brakes on it. And, and then it just came to a point where um, I realized that actually, um, as much as I love playing drums, I absolutely hate talking about them. <laughs> and every day was talking about drums with people. Um, oh, man, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> I, I just, I hate... I love playing them. I love music with a passion, but getting geeky about talking about getting geeky about the gear mm. and how all that shit works. I, I don't care. I just want to hit him. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So that, so that I know, the reason I know what you mean, right. Is before we started this business, we start, um, so we've been bands for years and we weren't seeing each other. We weren't getting a chance to play anymore. Like everyone was working high end jobs. So Tony and I, he's a lead singer. I was yeah. a guitarist. Um, uh, we wrote the wrote the songs, right? Uh, so we started a podcast called How to Write a Tune. And How to Write a Tune, basically, we sat down with musicians of all different ilk and yeah. talked about the writing process, right? The funnest bit of music. I've always really enjoyed, like, those conversations when you dig into people's creative, you know, where does your creative yeah. process come from? And that's, that's like, the, the coolest backroom conversation I've ever had. Mm. Cut to 60 episodes later, I never want to hear it again. I don't care. I just don't care. I don't care how yeah. I write. I don't care yeah. how you write anymore. Like, you know, it literally sucked out the fun of the best part of the, because I just, isn't it you know, weird? I, I started to find commonalities between everyone. And then was like, cool. So everyone just writes exactly the same. Huh. <laughs> that was not what oh. I was looking for. Out of this. Damn. <laughs> it's weird. I think I might've just unpacked something there because, um, oddly enough, as much as I love, and I, I love designing stuff. I love drawing stuff. I, Again, the, the the geeky side of it, the um, the the rules behind design, um, all that kind of stuff. Again, bores the pants off me talking about it. But I love talking about the actual creative process, which is yeah. kind of similar to what you've just done. I love talking about how to come up with ideas, and you know, and how does that work, and then how does this one thing become that thing, and all that, that stuff. I adore. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of um, here's a layout. Let's break down how you know the hierarchy of the text and how they can no let's not let's just do it i don't like overthinking stuff like that you just do it yeah. and it, does it look fun. good or does it not look good because what doesn't look good right let me change it's that let's yeah. not talk about it for 16 yeah. weeks before yeah then. yeah L luckily i've always find that that side of it quite straightforward <laughs> you know no knowing how it works and i read a couple of books that kind of affirmed it It was like oh, okay I've, I've, I've kind of been thinking along the right lines okay fine <laughs> I'm, that book. I'm never opening that again fine we're good um so yes so, uh, it, so that's the long answer to your question. The short answer is, uh, no, I didn't go straight into a job of graphic design. I've never worked. <laughs> I've never worked for anybody doing it because I, again, I think I would hate that. Um, so, I yeah, think it must be tough. I've always thought it must be so tough for designers because basically you got to put your heart and soul in something to make it great, and you got to hand it over to someone who goes like, no, no, not that. No, Better. I know I've I know I've employed you to do this, but yes. actually now that I see it, I know what no. should be done with it. Yeah, you've yeah. gone in the wrong direction. Like, 